This is Lesson 3-3, Adjacent Angles and Vertical Angles. As you see by the way the notes are outlined, this chapter has a ton of vocabulary and new theorems that we're introducing. So before you even begin, be sure that you've one, read the lesson, and two, filled in your note packet for all the various definitions, postulates, and theorems that are listed on the left-hand side of this page. So stop the video at this time and fill in all of those pieces so that as we're talking through this video, you can do the diagram piece with me. Now that you've filled in all of your notes, let's start putting some diagrams in with all, for all of these definitions, postulates, and theorems. And then we can also talk about what they mean. But I think the picture that corresponds to each of these will be very helpful to you. So the first one I want to talk about is adjacent angles. And we have talked about the word adjacent before. We've often talked about it in relationship to consecutive angles and consecutive vertices. But now we're going to just talk about adjacent angles. And what that is is two non-straight and non-zero. So it can't be 180 or it can't be zero degrees. They're adjacent angles if and only if the common side is in the interior of the angle formed by the non-common sides. So let me draw a picture of that for you so we can talk about it. So as you can see here, I drew angle ABC and angle CBD. Those are two angles and they share an interior ray of CB with non-interior rays AB and BD. So these two angles are connected to each other. They have a, a side in common. That's this the interior of the large angle that's formed by these two smaller angles. So that's what it would mean to be adjacent angles. The next one that we have is an angle bisector. And you will use angle bisectors in your theorems, or this, um, I'm sorry, and the definition of an angle bisector when you're working through proofs and when you're drawing conclusions about um, different statements that are made. So this one's very, very important. You might want to put a little star next to it. But let me draw you a picture of an angle bisector. As you can see here, I drew the angle PVQ. And what an angle bisector is, is that there's a ray that takes an angle and cuts it in half. So I know that angle PVR is going to have the same measure as angle RVQ. And you see these arcs that I put in my angles? That's the symbol that I use to indicate that those two angle measures are the same. So I know that these two are equal, and this this bisector is on the interior of the big, the angle that I'm bisecting, and so we say that VR is our angle bisector of angle PVQ. The next thing on our list is an extension of the angle measure postulate that we discussed in lesson one, and that's part E, and that's the angle addition assumption. We did that with points and line with the point line plane postulate too. We had a, an addition assumption. Now we're talking about angles. So if I have angles AVC and CVB and they are adjacent, then I can say the measure of AVC plus the measure of CVB is going to add up to the sum of or the total of angle AVB. Let's draw a picture. So you see that I have a, a large angle AVB, but that is made up of two smaller angles. The angle measure of AVC plus the angle measure of CVB will total my measure for AVB. Let's pretend this measure was 40 degrees and this measure was 45 degrees, then we would say that the measure AVC is 40. 40 plus 45 would give me a measurement of 85. So the measure of angle AVB would be 85 if this one was 40 and this one was 45. The next two are ang angle types of angles or combinations of angles that I know you've studied before. They're complementary and supplementary angles. So in complementary angles, if measures of two angles 
are r and s, then the angles are complementary if and only if r plus s equals 90. So basically, if you have two angles whose sum equals 90, then you have complementary angles. And if you have supplementary angles, instead of adding up to 90, the two angles would add up to 180 degrees. So let's uh, draw a picture of what that would look like also. Here I have two angles that have a sum of 90, so 40 degrees plus 50 degrees would make 90 degrees. And notice that these two angles are not connected to each other. Those are complementary, but if they were sharing a common side, they could still be complementary. Now let's look over here. I have another set of angles. They have a sum of 180, so I know that they are supplementary. These two happen to be adjacent angles, so they have a common side. So 130 and 50 make the 180. So to be supplementary or complementary, they can be adjacent, but they don't have to be. What they have to have is to be complementary, they have to add up to 90. And to be supplementary, they need to add up to 180 degrees. The next theorem that I have doesn't really have a diagram for it. I'm just going to talk you through it. If two angles have the same measure, their complements have the same measure. So if I have two angles that are 40 degrees, then they would each have a complement of 50 degrees to make complementary angles. So if you have two 40 degree angles, their complements would be need to be 50 degrees to get them to be 90, which would be complementary angles. And the same concept with supplementary angles. If I have two angles that are both 130 degrees, they would need to have 50 degree angles to be their supplements. So that would be the, un or the I'm sorry, the equal angles measure theorem. The next two on your list go very well together and they're extremely important as well. They rank right up there with the angle bisector theorem. So I want you to star the linear pair theorem and the linear pair definition. So um, go ahead and do that, and then I will draw a diagram with you to, to kind of talk about those two things. What is a linear pair? It happens to be two adjacent angles. So here I have two adjacent angles. But the thing that makes them a linear pair is that their non-common sides are opposite rays. So the common side for angle ABD and angle DBC is BD. So the non-common sides are AB and BC. And you notice those two rays form opposite rays. So we know they form a line, which means that they would equal 180 degrees. So that's what leads us into the linear pair theorem. So if I have two angles that add up to 180 degrees, then I know that they have to be supplementary. So I have the definition of a linear pair that tells me that if I have two adjacent angles that have opposite rays and they're non-common sides, then I know that they are a linear pair. And if I have a linear pair, because those non-opposite sides form a line, or I'm sorry, yes, the non-opposites form a line, or the, let me try that one more time, the non-common sides form a line then I know that that line is 180 degrees, which would then match the definition of supplementary angles, which is the two angles add up to 180 degrees. So this linear pair theorem you will use often to help you find angle measures in different diagrams. The next two things on our list are vertical angles and the vertical angles theorem. And these two pairs are also very, very important in our study of geometry. We'll use these the, the vertical angles theorem as a justification in several of our proofs. But let's first of all talk about what, what they are, the definition of vertical angles. What it is, two non-straight angles are vertical angles if and only if the union of their sides is two lines. So let's take a look at this. So I have an angle here, this first one, and then I have this one. If I join these two angles together, their sides now form a line. I think of vertical angles and the X. They make an X. So if you see an X, you can say you have vertical angles. So if two angles are vertical angles, then their measures are equal. So if you look at this situation, this non-straight angle and this non-straight angle are vertical angles. And so we know that those have the same measure. So the measure of angle one is going to equal the measure of angle two. 
but we also have another set of vertical angles here. We have angle 3 and angle 4. This is a non-straight angle and this is a non-straight angle and when we take the union of that we get two lines. And so the measure of angle 3 is equal to the measure of angle 4 also.